Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I moved to Toronto about three years ago and I've gotten to fall in love with the city and I'm going to be showing you eight of my favorite spots that you should visit if you're ever in Toronto. If it's the first time coming to my channel, welcome and if you're returning, thanks for coming back. Don't forget to subscribe and like my videos as this helps my, I, oh Lord, my algorithm a lot. <laughs> Enjoy. The first place you want to visit while in Toronto is Distillery District. Toronto's historic cobblestone and pedestrian only village plays host to a number of events, boasts of our 80 shops and boutiques, as well as restaurants and cafes. This area, while a hotspot for locals and tourists alike, has a rich history rooted deep in the beginning of Toronto's timeline. Some of the fun things to do in distillery districts is checking out the vintage boutiques where you can spend hours in one store browsing through a plethora of strange items that will look just amazing in your living room as well as art galleries where there's the series of galleries open for the public in the district and each establishment represents its own vision of contemporary art and has a rich roast of electric artists renowned from around the world one of the beauties of this very district is that it's not it's not constant in a, in a good way um, they have a Sunday market here where the, the locals come to sell their products and export uh, and people come from different parts of the city to come buy and every Christmas as well they have this amazing Christmas market where the entire place is converted to a Christmas uh, you no know, Christmas goods are on sale. The ticket is usually well in demand so you want to book ahead to get the best experience but that's one thing that makes this little district quite special. It's never this, it changes frequently, it's seasonal and it brings out the best of itself during each season. The second place you want to check out is CN Tower. This is Canada's iconic tower. Originally declared as one of the seven wonders of the world in 1995, the name CN originally referred to Canadian National, which is a railway company that built the towers. It took about 40 months and over 1,500 workers to complete this building. It used to be the tallest structure in the world until it was surpassed in September 2007 by Bosch Khalifa and Guangzhou TV sites tower in 2009. It has a glass ceiling that has that is over 122 feet and is capable of holding weight of five hippopotamuses. So you want to be careful while going into uh, going to have a view of this. The process is pretty fast once you get on the line, but you're going to have a security check once you get there. So you want to travel lights because they're going to open up your bags and start searching what you have in your items. So you just want to be careful around that. Secondly as well, they take these pictures which are not free. When I went there, I thought it was free. So you want to avoid uh, getting into that situation where it's not option, it's not mandatory you take the pictures, but if it's going to save you some extra seconds by not taking it, don't take it. And uh, from there, you get onto the elevator. From the elevator, you go up in the sky and you're welcomed by this amazing view, having a 360 degree of the city seeing it from the downtown core to billy bishop airport to toronto east this gives you a full 360 degree of the uh 360 view of the city and also if you want to do a skywalk for the adventurous people you can always jump jump off from the cliffs very safe to do so they have something that helps you out with that uh, but i'll not be doing that today i just want to have a view of the city and also check out some restaurants down in the cn tours as well The third place you want to check out is the Ripley's Aquarium of Canada. It holds about 5.7 million gallons of water and shows marines and freshwater habitats from around the world. You get to immerse yourself in a world of 20,000 aquatic animals and discover your own underwater adventure. The aquarium boasts of more than 5.7 million liters of water. It's North America's longest underwater viewing tunnel and more than 100 interactive opportunities. Get up close and personal with several touch exhibits featuring scarlet cleaner shrimps and stingrays, 
The awe-inspiring attraction consists of 10 carefully curated galleries showcasing a cross-section of saltwater and freshwater environments from around the world, starting with species from Toronto's backyard, the Great Lake Basin. The fourth place you want to check out in Toronto is the Blore and Yorkville area. Today's Yorkville is known for its elegant shopping and dining experiences. In the 1980s, Yorkville began to transform into a luxurious neighborhood that we all know it for it today. This started because of the condo boom that Toronto experienced in the mid to late 1980s when housing prices soared and speculations became rampant. So today, uh, Yorkville has firmly established itself as Canada's most expensive neighborhood Thanks to retailers like Holt Renview, Louis Vuitton, Chanel and Tiffany who set up shops on Bloor Street, both Holt and Harry Rosen moved into the neighborhood in the late 1970s and in addition of the Bloor subway next to it, it helped transfer the Yorkville region into Canada's capital of keeping movement and mini mile. The restaurants here are a lot more different, much more posher than what you see even in downtown as well. The stores, the buildings, the people. Yeah, if you want to see the best of Toronto, you definitely want to come to York, uh, sorry, Blore and Yorkville to see the people on weekends. Just see the well relaxed people. Everyone is well dressed. The food is amazing. The patterns are beautiful. All right, so I'm going to be taking you to my favorite restaurants in Blore and Yonk. They sell really good food. We're gonna be trying out the fries and the burger and I'll let you guys know exactly how I how it tasted. Next place on my list of places you want to visit is Chinatown. Established in 1878, Chinatown is one of Toronto's oldest and most dynamic neighborhoods. You find a bustling produce market that spills into the streets, numerous shops and food stalls, neon signs, and a plethora of cuisines, not only Chinese but Vietnamese, uh, Korean, and some Japanese, for example. Don't forget to stroll around Spadina Avenue for the tastiest Peking duck or taking your pick of Chinese, Vietnamese or Japanese food. The House of Gourmet is also known for their renowned wonton brisket noodle soup, the top funk for wall-to-wall -wall kitchen supplies and every cooking tool you can imagine. Sonic Boom, a carnivorous emporium of new and used music books and candy. I can always book a guided food tour. There's a fun dumpling crawl where you can taste your way through those fluffy pillows of deliciousness. One thing that makes the Chinatown here stand out is it's pretty much spread across different streets. Unlike most Chinatowns in other cities that is sort of in a square or like a big rectangular space, the Chinatown in Toronto spreads into various streets so you can always see different streets reflecting different characters and it's easy to navigate around. As someone who used to live in Hong Kong, this place 
So Chinatown was a special place to me as I did uh, live in Hong Kong for a part of my life. So whenever I want to have that cultural, um, what's the word, reminder, I just take a stroll down here, walk past the dog street where they sell food. And occasionally they do host some Chinese uh, culture, like Chinese New Year in Chinatown is really amazing. So many things to do. And definitely a place to visit if you're ever in Chinatown. Um, some dumplings as well, dumplings, uh, dog, you name it, the traditional Hong Kong noodles. And I call China my third home. So coming, coming here definitely gives me that third home vibes, you know, a uh, place I used to live before. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. And just to see the community is always a throwback to what it, what it was like living in Hong Kong, definitely. And also the cheapest massages in Toronto can be found in Chinatown. So if you want to be massaged, uh, yeah, definitely come down here. <laughs> Another hotspot definitely is Kensington Market. It's an open air food and clothing market in downtown Toronto. This multicultural marketplace is known for its independent spirit, colorful shop fronts, vibrant morals, charismatic locals, and people friendly pedestrian Sunday events. The eclectic business located here sells fresh produces, che cheese, meats, bread, desserts, nuts, flowers, even marijuana, and some vintage clothing. This area is also a the variety of restaurants, cafes and bars. The shops also spill into the sidewalk giving the area of vibrant street culture unique to the city of Toronto. What makes it more interesting is all of this can be found in core downtown Toronto. And your trip to, your trip to Toronto is not complete without visiting Kensington Market. It's roots in an immigrant working class and today is one of the most diverse, most unique and most photographed areas in the city. When you visit, you see a mixture of the same immigrant community, their shops, artists and their workspace, as well as a new wave of a more upscale cafe and restaurant. Too many things to do here, you can shop around at the, all the vintage clothing stores to get a nice outfit for yourself. You can take the Beyond Kensington Market tall food tour and grab a bite as you explore the street and this amazing park where you can lay down and relax and soak in the sun. What I do love about Kensington Market is right next to Chinatown, it's very Asian focused. But in Kensington Market, it's much more diverse. So there's Italian, there's Jamaican, there's the uh, American. It's just a diverse pub and it has this park where everybody comes together. It's a melting pot where people meet, interact, smoke some weed as well. But I'll I'm gonna be smoking weed today, obviously, but um, it's one of my best places. Very chilled environment. Uh, I think it's for the for the urban and the relaxed people. Definitely, you should definitely come and visit here. Next place on my list is the High Park, which is a municipal park in Toronto, Canada. It's a mixed recreational natural park with sporting, cultural, and educational facilities, as well as a beautiful garden. A one third of the park remains natural state and a rare and it has a rare oak savanna ecology. Why I like High Park is that in the craziness of Toronto downtown, it offers the ultimate calm. You can just be really chilled, you can go on a trail if you like to, and it contains some of the most significant natural areas in the city of Toronto, including an outstanding concentration of provincial and regionally rare plant species, rare black oak savannas, and locally significant examples of lakeshore marsh, natural bottom lands, and a dry red white oak upland forest. And it's all located in an urban landscape, like I said earlier, and uh, there's so many fun things to do there, basically. Uh, but definitely one of my favorite spots. It has a park for children to play. The about high park is you can literally go from having a calm, inner zen in this cool area and finding yourself in. Welcome to Sunnyside Beach, one of the best beaches in Toronto. You can get anything you want here. 
this is my final spot i think everyone should visit if they're in toronto it's called sunnyside park it's located in the west end of toronto on the shore of lake ontario it was once the home of sunnyside amusement park and it's a popular place for picnics and there's so many things to do there well, like there's a boardwalk for pedestrians there's a trail tour for cyclists and there are also multi-purpose just a mini stadia for people to just you know dance do anything they feel like doing on the east side of the sunny pavilion there's a rider pool where uh and also as well as a mini pack as well which is great for great for family great for kids as well and one thing i like about here is just the fact that it's very close to high pack so you can be in that zen and pop out right into the beach and have an amazing time basically <laughs>